Hey, this is Mark Marshall with guitaristmarkmarshall.com and theproaudiofiles.com. I want to do another production breakdown, and in this episode, I'm going to talk about a composition I wrote called Hodad from Mars. And I was uh, writing for a TV show where they were looking for a bit of uh, a 60s sci-fi with like a little bit of humor in it. Uh, so I, I thought that I would go down like the surf route, and I was really interested in, in getting a little bit of a, like a theremin type vibe in there because um, you know those early '60s, late '50s sci-fi films always seem to have like a, a, a theremin or something of that nature, creating those weird UFO sounds. Uh, but I did something a little bit unusual to get the theremin sound. Knowing that I was going for an early 60s style production, I knew that I wasn't going to layer too many guitars or get too fancy, and a lot of those recordings were um, were fundamentally live with maybe a few orchestral overdubs if they had them, uh, but there weren't a lot of like fancy guitar overdubs, and uh, so I tried to think of it a lot like a band, like say like The Ventures or something, what, what they would have done if they were in the studio cutting this song, uh, which meant two guitars and an organ, drum kit, some percussion, and uh, and then this theremin track. Let's, uh, let's listen to the, each of the tracks and talk about them a little quick. We're going to start with the drum loop, which I pulled from the uh, Billy Martin collection from Drums on Demand. I really like this loop because it wasn't 100% like true surf, uh, but it implied that, and so to me it kind of put it almost in between you know, vintage uh, 60s surf and like, and like modern uh, feel to it. The bass, I used uh, a Fender Bass 6, which is uh, like an octave lower than a guitar and it has six strings. I use this as opposed to like a Fender PUJ bass because the pickups that are in it just have a little bit of a unique tonality to it. Uh, there's like just something in the, the twanginess to them that is a little bit more than, than the, the heavy thuddiness of like a P bass. Let's listen to it. I played the bass with the pick and just ran it pretty much. Uh, DI, I was running it through the uh, the Ampeg SVT bass head, which I do a lot. This is the bass six that I was using, and you can see it has these single coil pickups. And um, I'm not sure of the specifics of the pickups, but you have uh, some adjustments here to be able to to mess with uh, which pickups are being used and how much bass is on them. Uh, so I may or may not have used the switches to roll off a little bit of the low end, but sometimes when I was doing some of these old style recordings, I'll do that just to, to thin out the sound a little bit so it's not super woofy. Um, probably at this time they weren't even DIing guitars too much, so it was mostly through an amp, a mic amp. Uh, so I did the best I can to kind of emulate a little bit of that vibe. Tambourine can kind of be important in a lot of this early 60s uh, music, so I did this. want to talk about the organ before we move on to the guitars. Uh, I got this really cool organ sound. It's super vibey and I used the Mtron plug-in and I just have it on uh, the organ. So the MK2 organ sound you see there. I didn't do any modifications to it. I just found it and, and rolled with it because it had a lot of character to it. We're going to move on to guitars and I'm going to start with the basic rhythm guitar track which is going to be fairly clean and have a lot of reverb on it. I track that right with the reverb just like they would in the 60s. Uh, let's listen to the next guitar part, which is the melody line. Mm -hmm. 
These are all real guitar amps. I used a Stratocaster into a Princeton reverb and mic'd with a ribbon mic, and that was pretty much it. Now, I harmonized that guitar melody line with a second line, which is like a third up. Uh, this is kind of like a bit of a ventures thing, right? So there's technically three guitars on this, but uh, but the, the two melody lines are harmonized. Let's listen. <laughs> You're going to notice that there's not a lot of low end on all the guitars. Like if I pop all three of them in at one time. On their own, they might sound a little thin. Uh, I did this intentionally just to keep a lot of the low end from interfering with the bass guitar and bass drum. And also, things that were recorded in the early 60s did not have a lot of uh, depth and low end to them. So a lot of those surf and twangy guitars are actually uh, have a much narrower uh, range of frequency than you would expect. And to go about this, because a lot of times coming off the speaker of the cabinet, there's quite a bit of low end. Uh, I, I roll off everything below 100 hertz. Uh, here I have it on this Neve 1073 plugin. And I just set that there and, uh, and I listen. And I don't do this blindly. Uh, I have to consider a little bit like what era and what kind of song I'm recording. Sometimes you might want a lot of that low end, uh, but often I'll, uh, I'll have to try to think about the song and, and further down the line, like when it's going to be mixed and, and uh, what parts I want to be naturally separated from one another. This is not something that I always just leave in the hands of the mixing engineer. I think of, of mixing to be another stage and polishing it, but not necessarily uh, the stage of, of people having to completely uh, create the sonic identity of the song. The theremin track in this song, it is something slightly unconventional. There's an app for the iPhone and the iPad called Bebot, right? And I don't know if, I'm hoping this will show up on the screen, uh, but it's a really cool app. You can get in and really tweak it a lot to set it to scales, and, and you can just you can create a lot of options in it. So I, I messed around with this a little bit to get the sound a little more like a theremin. I got turned on this. I did a jam session with uh, an artist named Wally DeBacker. A lot of people know him as Gautier. And uh, it was a um, improvisational jam session. And he showed up with an iPad with uh, a couple of things on it. Uh, this was one of them. And he was just getting all these incredible sounds out of it, like things I, I couldn't even get out of all my VSD plugins and, and analog synthesizers and stuff. It was really cool. And, and after we got done with the session, I was asking him questions about it. And then he was showing me a little bit what he was doing. Uh, but Bebot was one of them. And it just kind of opened my mind to, to use it also as a creative tool. Um, I think that sometimes when we're dealing with you know iPads and iPhones, we kind of don't really think of using them in professional applications, but they can be. And sometimes there's sounds that you can get on there that you can't get anywhere else. So I, uh, I just ran a feed out of my iPhone into, uh, into my Apollo and got a good level and just recorded it in. Let's listen to it. I have a lot of reverb on the theremin sound, or the bebop sound. I'm running first into a delay, actually. Um, it's the PSP Echo. I'm doing this just to lengthen the notes, so it's a fairly slow delay. It just makes everything a little longer. And then I have it drenched in a lot of reverb uh, on this EMT plate. The only adjustment I made was setting the, uh, the, the uh, input filter at 250 hertz just to kill some of the low end so that there's no mud building up. Let's listen to just the, the, uh, the reverb sound. And that's it. I think sometimes simplicity is your friend. This is a very basic track. It didn't really take a lot to mix it because in this era, they also weren't doing a lot of crazy automation and stuff. So uh, compositionally, and I kept that in mind a lot that I wasn't going to need a lot of moving parts, right? It was uh, more of a, of a static kind of band configuration.